What's going on guys? Welcome back to the final episode of NHL 23 Columbus Blue Jackets Franchise Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for support on these videos. If you wouldn't mind leaving that thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. As you can see, we're currently 3-3 three and three in the preseason. Oldest there has got 8 points in 6 games. Honestly, it's not bad for, I believe, third line left winger. Um, last year, did not win a third Stanley Cup. Unfortunately, it was actually the Florida Panthers who looking like they have a very good shot to win it in real life this year. Obviously, you'll have to wait and see. Unless there's, you know, some miracle. going to be a Vegas, Florida Stanley Cup final. So, Right here, guys, I'll show you the team is looking like for this final season. We got Zegers, Bedard, and Celebrini still on that first line. Fiala, Johnson, Crystal on the second. Olis, Erickson, X, Sanchez on the third. With Pecker, Jenner, and Grand Pierre on the fourth. Now, last episode, I asked you guys whether or not Jenner should keep the C, and it seemed like most of you said yes, because like he's had this whole time. Might as well leave it on him. Some of you want me to send him down to the AHL, but in terms of his role, like he's still got 90 face-offs. He looks like he'll be okay there. I want to be loyal to him. Defensively here, this is our strong suit for sure. Wenski, Clark. Jerry Check is in just such a nasty top four. And then even Simmons Chef, Jerry Check on the bomb pair, they get a plus three. Also asked you guys if I should keep that bomb pair for the chemistry. And most of you said yes. Uh goal timing wise, we got Cran there as a starter. A3 overall with Hyalit though, so it should grow during the season. Houston as well, 2180, highly potential. Now in terms of the power play, I feel like power play one there looks nasty. Fiala, of course, the new guy on this team. Uh, even power play two there looks very solid. Foreman gets a plus five. Second one gets a plus three. PK wise, you got Erickson Eck, Pecker. Dickinson Clark, they get a plus two. Uh, second there's a zero, third's a zero, which honestly I'll take. Normally it's negative, as you can see. Second three men's a minus one, third there's a minus three. And for actually mention two on the power play, one, we have a big change. For the first time, it's not Renski there at the quarterback spot, it's Brent Clark, as uh, he's actually higher rate now than Renski with slightly higher passing stats. So I figured we would give him a shot. Now, in terms of the AHL team, guys, they still look very good. Plucking off the near back, Perot, Soto, we just signed, Bemstrom, Texier, uh, Minton, Blum, Patolny, some 70s on the fourth line defensively there. Hallway, Jackalow, there's the 81 medium lead. So definitely you're gonna be moving him at the deadline. He's got really good like defensive stats, so he could even go up in rating during the season. The rest of the guys there, high 70s. We've got an 81 Samari, elite potential starting goalie. Could also trade him at the deadline. So we're definitely gonna try and bring in a superstar, 50%. Basically the best guy we can get to give this team the best chance we can at winning a Stanley Cup. So in our final season here, guys, we have 100 offense, 98 defense, 83 goaltending. Let's see if we can get it done. All right, guys, we're well, then now with a record of 20, 11, and 3. So pretty good start here to the year. Currently third place there in the division. AHL team, 16, 8, and 3. They're second. So good start for both teams. Can't complain. Perot there, but a point per game pace. Uh, Celebrini over point per game. Love seeing that. Surprise a little bit dark, you know, kind of not popping off here. I feel like he's right in his prime. But still, we got a couple months here now till the deadline. Going to wait because that's usually when it's easy to trade for players. Hopefully they're still in the playoff position and can... You know, make a big splash for the deadline. All right, guys, so the deadline here, the record of 34, 21, and 5. Pretty happy with that. But we're still third place in the division as the Devils and Hurricanes are just absolutely unreal. They've been, and they've been that way for the past few years. Devils of 96, Hurricanes 91, top two teams in the league. Of course, they're both in a division and we're pretty much guaranteed to be playing one of them. AHL wise, 35, 14, and 5. We're actually tied for first place there with the Toronto Marlies. So, AHL, Perot slowed down slightly, but still almost a point per game. Celebrini on that point per game pace. So, like I said, we'll get to the deadline. Gonna try and make, you know, the biggest trade we can here. This is our last season. No reason to, you know, wait or anything. Prospects aren't gonna do us any good. We gotta go out here with a splash. 95 overall Charlie McAvoy. I mean, that would be pretty ridiculous. He actually signed for only 11 million. He was asking for like 17 with the Penguins. Miko Ranton in there, 93 overall. The value's not too, too crazy. We go after like both of them. Even her about 89 overall goalie. I'll have to check and see how ours is doing. One year left, uh, cap, it's obviously easier to get, like San Coven there, 87 overall. Wyatt Johnston as well. Hiddle, Berggren, Shabbat. Okay, Shabbat there, 87, one year left, 8.6. Thing is, Shabbat would literally be a bomb pairing defenseman for us, so it doesn't make a ton of sense. But like I said, guys, first here, I guess we'll see how our goaltenders did. Again, they're high elite, so they could have grown. Uh, let's see here. So, Cran has grown. He's now an 84. He's putting up a 911 and a 265. That's not too bad. Um, honestly, like that's pretty solid. The 66 poise I am worried about for the playoffs, but we'll see. Houston, you know, could have better numbers. Let's see. Samar there in the AHL. He's crushing it. So, yeah, like I think Cran for how cheap he is, a 911265, that seems to be pretty good. I guess we'll take a look here and see, like, how's Herbal doing, because he could be an upgrade. 926251. The Ducks are a seller, but they're 32 and 22. Why are they a seller? Makes no sense to me. I mean, he's got 82 poise. I like that a lot more. 96 breakaway and five hole. He's got like pretty much 90s glove and stick. He could definitely be an upgrade and he's not that expensive. So maybe we do do this. Why not have just two good goalies? And actually guys, the reason Herbell's on the block is because they also have Garnson here. He's an 86. So uh, they're trying to trade away one of them. Obviously Herbell, they're AN overall. Definitely the better goalie. So trying to get a second round pick back with him, offering up Houston one for one. 
2280 high elite. He's our backup. Not really doing the best here. So our starter will be the new backup. Pretty good goalie tandem. I think they might say no because of the second. We'll see. Trades rejected. Um, should we at least get like a third round pick back because the value is on our side with that high elite goalie. Just ask for the third there. Come on. Trades accepted. Okay. So again, hopefully that makes sense. I would love to get like Charlie McAvoy, uh, one of the best defensemen in the game. The thing is, Value-wise, like, we'd have to give up Renske or Clark. Don't really want to do that. We could give up Jared Check. We have his brother who drafted him. I guess next, could potentially give up Dickinson. He's got one year left as well. But, like, with him, we're looking at a first-round pick. Ross there, who's a medium elite prospect. Jackal as well, uh, the other medium elite, the guy we buried. Would this all get it done? That's actually pretty close. All right, guys, so just retained 50% Charlie McAvoy again. Great defense, been 95 overall. He's got 59 points this year, almost a point per game. 99 defense awareness. I didn't realize his defense awareness went up that high. That's nuts. 93 shot block, 95 stick check. So yeah, like probably, you know, the best defense awareness for defense in the, in the game right now. Dickinson's good, but he's only an 88. You got first round pick, Ross there, medium elite prospect. Also Jack, another medium elite. The value's pretty equal here for Pittsburgh, who signed him. So they basically get all this stuff. Uh, for a one-year, you know, $10 million contract. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. The value on the table is too far off. The fact that they're getting back, like, so much there. Um, we don't really have much more to give up. Could give up Cran because he's the new backup. Crawford, though, unsigned, mainly goalie. Throw him in. Trade is still rejected. I guess we don't need next year's first. I'm trying to think. Like, we're pretty much at the max here in terms of what we can offer. Look at all those late-round picks as well. A couple firsts here. Trade still rejected. All right, guys, so our last chance to get McAvoy here. Instead of giving up Crawford, we could give up Cran. Obviously, he's the backup now with Herbel, so Samar would be the new backup. We're still looking good goalie-wise. Do kind of feel bad trading away both of our NHL goalies here at the deadline, but it brings in McAvoy. Again, that package is insane. We'll only be doing this if it was one year left, which is the case, because we wouldn't be able to afford to bring back McAvoy, so literally is just, you know, cup or bust. Dickinson first, meanly forward, meanly defenseman, high elite goalie. What more could the Penguins want here? Wow, and they still reject. I mean, yeah, at that point, I don't need them. All right, guys, so I'm still big game hunting, trying to get Miko Ranch in here from the Cardo Avalanche. 93 overall at 35 years old. He's got 38 goals, 31 assists, so uh, 69 points on the year. Nice, perfect puck skills. Shots basically perfect, 99 rush accuracy, 99 offensive awareness. Put him on the top line, are you kidding me? And surprisingly, like, his value's not that high. I got them retaining 50% there so we can afford them, but like Fiala and Jackala combined is pretty much the same amount of value. Jackala obviously in the AHL, Fiala, we just got, so I'm like least loyal to him, plus need to send back some salary. So we'll see what the Avalanche say here. Ranton is on the block. Trades rejected. Uh, woefully insufficient. I mean, we have obviously a ton of stuff to still add on here. I'm not gonna lie, I did feel like we we're getting Ranton in too cheap there, but uh, the value looked like it was even. Now with the first round pick, I also tried throwing on Crawford here, medium late prospect goalie. Look at the value now, come on. Still rejected. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping to keep Ross, because like, you know, real life, you'd probably want to keep this guy again, future, you know, bottom six star for us, but we're going for it this year. We'll throw him on there too. I feel like for Ranton, ninth year overall, it's definitely worth it. Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna lie, guys, I didn't realize Ranton was gonna be so hard to trade for, so here's my new offer, because everything else before that didn't work. Jackala, Fiala, Cran, who of course, the high lead starter, first round pick, Ross, for Ranton. The value is, what, triple our side? I don't understand. He's on the block. Come on. What, what is the point of trade value? All right, guys, I'm running out of time here, trying to make a trade happen. Uh, Jackal here for Bo Horvat. Basically, tried to get McAvoy, tried to get Ranch. And I, I couldn't believe those offers weren't working. Bo Horvat here obviously wanted. Um, oh my gosh, the side's not going to work. I can't believe this. The only trade we make was for Herdabelle. We got all these extra assets just because I spent way too long trying to make the McAvoy and Ranch and trades happen. Again, the value was like, you know, three, four times on our side. Game kept saying no. That's all right, though. I guess, you know, the core of this team is what we're supposed to go in with, which is fine. Uh, Boston there gets tied to Landria. Jake Neighbors to Buffalo. Uh, let's see what else here. Toronto Maple Leafs there get Nolan Foote. Kulia Chonik to the Flames. Thomas Harley there to the Avs. Jake Bean to the Flyers. Yamamoto goes back to Edmonton. Uh, Shea Theodore to the Bruins. Okay. Frank Nazar to the Islanders. No adoption to the Blackhawks. That's a big-time trade. Hiddle there to the Senators. Philip Forsberg to the Panthers. Our trade for Herbal. Uh, Noel Gundler there to the Senators as well. You got Razzle Sandin to the Boston Bruins. Bjorkstrand there to Buffalo. So, a uh, pretty good trade deadline. Again, I can't believe uh, came up short on both McAvoy and Rantanen. And start the trade deadline, guys. Obviously, no change there to the forward group or the defense. But goaltending-wise, we now have 89 Haribel, Cran backing him up. So, hopefully, I mean, goaltending was, you know, our worst rated thing. I think it was like 83 overall. So, maybe that will be 
the X Factor for us. Take a quick look here at our ratings now. Should still have 198 for offense, defense. We do. And we've got 92 goal tidy now. So, yeah. I mean, we addressed, you know, the biggest position in need. We'll see if that uh, makes the Stanley Cup champion or not. All right, guys. We're out the next season here with a record of 50, 25, and 7. So, we finished with a 50 win season, which I'm happy about. As you can see here, 107 points on the year. And we're third place in the division. Like, are you kidding me? Hurricanes 117. Devils 126. I believe, okay, Maple Leafs 109. So, we're the fourth best team in the NHL. Pretty much the top three teams in the league that are all in our division. Like, are you kidding? So, we get the Hurricanes round one. AHL, 49-18-5. Huge year for them. 103 points. And they do win their league, which is pretty cool. Uh, Perot there finished with 60 points. Again, that's only in a 72-game season. Connor Bedard there, actually our lean scorer, finished with 87 points here in the final season. Honestly, I was expecting him to, you know, have a bit better of a run here the last few years. I'm not sure why he slowed down. Maybe just didn't play as well with Celebrini and Zegers. Needed uh, Goudreau on his wing. So, Speaking of, Celebrini there, 77, Zegra 75. Not so bad. They've all got great plus minuses. Uh, Fiala as well, 71. He dropped a rating to 86, but still like performed quite well. Wierenski, 64. Same with Clark. So both guys get it done. Johnson, 63. So what is that? Seven guys on the team, 60 plus points. We'll take it. Crystal at 56, which is solid. Jerichek, 44. That's like the most points I think he's ever had for us. Uh, just doing that randomly there. Olis, 42 is not bad. Pecker, 41 is a fourth liner. I mean, that's actually super good. Uh, Dickinson 34, so everyone's chipping in. Eric Sinek, honestly, third line center. He's dropping from 90 to 85. Would have expected more from him, but still, can't be too upset. So let's see. Herbal here. I mean, it looks like it was worth the trade. 926 and a 251. Actually, those were his stats with Anaheim. His stats with us 911, 278. Record, though, very good. 11 3 and 2. Again, I really just wanted that poise 82. Uh, Kran's poise of 66. I was just too worried about heading into the playoffs. And then quickly here, guys, AHL team, Samar, 913, 223. Looks really good. Perot, got Nieder back there. Most of the veterans, honestly, um, are just getting it done there for them. And I look at the entire league here. Pasternak had 113 points. Leading in the league, you got Matthews, Hughes, and Beniers all at 105. Nietzsche's now at the Bruins. Lecker, Mackey, Sveshnikov, Nylander, Rantanen. Again, I can't believe couldn't get him or McFoy. We offered so many good assets. The trade value bar was so far on our side. I don't get it. Uh, goals, Pasternak there, 63. Does win the Rachel Shard. Uh, defensively here, Dalene, 87 points. Pretty impressive. Our two guys, actually Rensky there, just barely made the first page. Of course, Clark tied with them. So I think that's pretty good. Goaltending here, Comiso, of course, 48 wins. The guy we traded, 9-2-2-2-4-5. He wasn't doing that for us, though. Goes to New Jersey and uh, starts popping off. Best save percentage actually is Herbel, though. 9-2-6 is on our team. Thing is, that's, you know, with the Ducks. Hopefully, we can keep that going here into the playoffs. And then goals against is Comiso there with a 2-4-5. Rookie skaters, I don't believe we had one this year. And Peter Martinick there. On the York Rangers, he put up 60, so probably winning the Calder. And as I mentioned, guys, we finished fourth there in the entire NHL. In fact, you know, three of the top four, though, in our division. You actually had eight teams with 100-plus points. Last place here in the final season, the Chicago Blackhawks, 63. Goals for the Devils, they were first. Carolina's second, and we're third. Are you kidding me? And we're all about to just destroy each other in these playoffs. Uh, goals against here, the best was the Devils. Uh, we were actually on the top page, though, so what is that, like, we are the 7th best team in terms of goals against, plus we added Haribel at the trade deadline. I feel like, you know, this team has a chance. I think, you know, our toughest tests are going to be early on, actually. If we can get through the first couple rounds, have a very good chance to win that Stanley Cup. So, take a look here and see what the Carolina Hurricanes lines are looking like. Obviously, we've played them in the past. That top 6 there is still very good. Sveshnikov, Savoy, Holtz, Wood, Aho. Kudala, they got Taze. Lindholm's third line center there with Mark Stone. Both those guys were on our team for a bit. Kidney, Waz, Adina. Uh, defensively, Guli, Nikishin. That's about it. How is this team getting done with that defense? Goaltending, they got 90 Kochikov. I mean, what I'm looking at here, I feel like defense doesn't matter as much in this game because after that top pairing, their defense, it's kind of AHL worthy, honestly. I think it's a little on par with our AHL defense. And yet they were second place in the entire division. Second place in the entire NHL. So... See what happens here, guys. First two games in Carolina. I just want to win at least one. Come on. HL team, of course, also starting their playoff run. 8-3 win their game, too. That's big. So, head home now. Can we at least... Um, okay. 2-2. Two, two. I'll take that. 7-3 loss. Answer back, though, with a 6-3 win. Game 5's in Carolina. 5-2 win. Just have to win one of these next two games. Please, EA gods. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We had to win one of two, 5-4 OT loss and a 4-2 loss. My hands are behind my head right now. I cannot believe it. Oh my goodness. I think our final three seasons were all first round exits after having unbelievable regular seasons. Luckily, we did win, you know, a couple Stanley Cups um, in the middle there with this team. But 
just absolutely heartbreaking. I guess, too, like, it doesn't help when your uh, division is so stacked, but I thought we had them. We were up 3-2. I thought we had it. We were going to close it out. Uh, we got the Marlies here now in the second round with the AHL team. And they're currently up 2 nothing. And, okay, they beat them in five. I was a little bit worried there about the reverse sweep. Uh, next year, they got the Hartford Wolfpack. Can we actually take them out to move on to the Calder Cup final? We sweep them. So, we're in back-to-back -back Calder Cup finals. Last year, unfortunately, we actually lost in the Calder Cup final. This year, we're up three games to one. So, can we get it done? I'm just going to simulate here, guys. 1-1 one, one, game five. Still 1-1. One, one. Resume simulation. Come on. Let's at least win, like, a Calder Cup here in the final season. Road shooting them by quite a bit, too. Like, almost 10 there. They're on a power play. Coachella, kill it off. Another power play. What are these refs doing? All right, 31 shots there, 25. Are you kidding me? Two to one. And yeah, okay, so we're not winning game five. Game six here, we're still one game away from Calder Cup. 1-1, one, 2-2, one. Two, two. what the heck? Soto there, gets the tire. Coachella again. Power play goal, gets a 3-2 lead here in the third. 4-2, I feel like can pretty uh, safely finish the game. And 6-2, to two. boys. We are not going to do a Golden State here, blow a 3-1 series lead, are we? Because back-to-back Calder Cup final losses for the HL team would be so devastating. I think that might be worse, honestly, than three straight first-round exit for the NHL team. 2-0 lead here, Game 7. Let's go. 3-1. We've actually got a lead now. Can they just hold on to it, though? Please. Of course, 3-2 now. Pure for them. Are you kidding me? They tie it up. <laughs> There's no way. This game just... Okay, Zanetti. 4-3. Three, three minutes to go. 2 one 23 seconds nasco empty netter five to three all right so um it looks like the ahl team's actually gonna take on the calder cup in the final year that's good to see and there you have it guys the cleveland monsters are again calder cup champions this is their second calder cup so i mean in a 10 year sim we got two stanley cups two calders i think like three presence trophies i want to say also the ahl team won their league about three times so you know, all in all, pretty good. Definitely got very unlucky there at the end with, again, three straight first-round exits in the playoffs. I think that just comes down to just literally unlucky. Like, you know, sometimes that happens, especially when you're matched up against another very good team round one. But at least you get to end it here with a Calder Cup. And right here, guys, you have the captain going out to win the Calder Cup. And you know what? I don't think that's Texier. Finally watching it here. And I think it might have. Nope, it's some dude named Blum who's on the fourth line. Are you kidding me? I honestly, I forgot to like remake Texi the captain. I don't know why, like, when you have a returning player, it doesn't keep him as the captain in the AHL. It does it for the NHL team, but uh, funny to see, you know, some of these guys. And now, right here, guys, you have the team pick. Unfortunately, we don't end this franchise with Stanley Cup team pick, but the call is a decent consolation prize. And as you can see there, the guys, the playoffs are complete. Boston Bruins actually went on with the Stanley Cup, led, of course, by Pashnak. Cleveland Monsters, the Calder. So. Uh, the franchise is about to complete. Red Wings there, picking first overall. So, uh, I'll take a look here at the awards for this year. Celebrini, 10 points in 7 playoff games. I mean, he was doing everything he could. Let's see how everyone else did. But Dart also had 10. Like, these guys, are you kidding me? Wierenski, Zegers, and Jerichek, all over a point per game. How? <laughs> so, our starting lineup, basically, was all over a point per game. And we didn't make it out of round 1. What were Herbell's stats? 8, 7, 1, 3, 7, 9. Did this trade ruin us in the first round? Although, I mean, Cran's stats were also pretty bad when he actually got in. Herbell's actually up to a 91 now, even after that playoff. I don't get it. So, I'll look at the playoff tree here. I mean, Boston definitely earned it. They beat Buffalo there in 7. They then beat the Leafs in 6. Carolina in 6, who actually took out the Devils. And then the Kraken there in 5. So, uh, their easiest matchup was to think of final, which I kind of expected. The East was absolutely stacked this year. So, uh, the team awards there, we know. Individually here, Pasternak got the Art Ross. Beniers, though, got the Hart. Dalene, James Norris. Pasternak, Lady Bing. Marnik there got the Calder. Pasternak also got Consumite. Huge year for him. Commissar Vesna, of course he got it. Also got the William Jennings. Fazio on the Blackhawks, Bill Masterton. Um, LA coach there, Jack Adams. McKenna there with his third straight Selkie. I don't even think I gave him that good defensive stats. So I'm going to have to go change that up. Uh, Beniers there, Ted Lindsay. Pasternak, Rangers Richard as I mentioned. Unreal season for him. We get our Calder Cup there, though, which is nice. Also in the regular season, I didn't realize that. Third straight year, so uh, pretty cool to see. Individually here, Strabak there, most points. This other guy's name, I cannot pronounce, MVP. Uh, Strabak there, most goals. Mostly, you know, created players here. Samari, though, our goalie. One best goalie. Bemstrom as well, um, MVP of the playoffs. Pretty cool. Strabak there, sportsmanship. Fair and safe community involvement. And then Samari also got the lowest goals again. So uh, to round this out, guys, let's take a look here at our coach at the record book. See how everything finished out. We did have the same head coach the entire time. I think the same AHL head coach as well. So um, you can see here, we took home two Stanley Cups and three Presidents Trophies over the 10 years, which basically means 
we averaged like one or the other every single year, which I think is pretty good. Win percentage there, 61.4. Again, AHL head coach here you can see. Two Calder Cups, and we know won the league three times, although it doesn't show that for whatever reason. And real quick, guys, before I show you the record book, check this out. I decided to sim forward to the retired player screen, and finally, in our final year, the captain, Boone Jenner, calls it quits. How fitting is that? I feel like Bedard's gonna have most of the records now for the Blue Jackets, so all-time points is actually Zach Renski. I guess he'd have a big lead on him. Season's there, Boone Jenner. Assist is also Renski. Jenner's got games played. Penalty minutes were not even close. Uh, Bobrovsky there still has the shutouts and wins. It was really cool to be able to bring him back to the team. We did that before everyone, you know, started to actually like him again in real life with his unreal playoff run. Goals there it is, Bedard, 417. Um, looking at the season awards here, Zegers actually has the franchise record, 110, 2027. Kind of surprised, you know, Bedard never got that. Although he does have most goals, 60 there, 2025. Zegers as well, assists, 75. Um, looking at the rookie here, Bedard, most assists. He also had most goals and most points. Game records here, Johnny Goudreau had seven points in the game in 2025. And I'm not sure you guys look at the NHL. So Patty Marlowe there has the most games played. Ovechkin actually went down the third most. Um, goalies, Vasilevsky, Fleury, second and third most games. Uh, goals is OV. Stammers is actually like 800 something. Uh, that's messed up. Let's see. Points there. Crosby finished second behind Gretzky. I think we mentioned that one. Ovi was fifth. Um, assists. Crosby's third there. Wins. Flurry was third. Vasilevsky fourth. Um, let's see. 50 goal seasons. Ovi there with 10. Has the record now. 100 point seasons. You got McDavid there tied with Lemieux. Not too bad. So um, all in all, guys, again, I would say a pretty good franchise. Now, if you did miss it, on YouTube as well as on Twitter, I have polls for what the next team will be for my franchise. You've got the Houston Coyotes, you've got the Minnesota Wild, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, who's ever leading that poll, I'd say, like, by the weekend will be the team I pick. So make sure to go and vote. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting the series. I appreciate it so much. So if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.